the bar quite high. All the speakers, I have to say that I'm very impressed with all the presentations and all the speakers and I would like to congratulate Arado and the organizers. It is not easy to put such events together and I know that you've been having some visa problems. We organize events, we always have that. But despite, you know, the various odds, you've done amazing work and I'm sure that this is an institution that will continue for many years to come and will become a very, very useful institution for the, the Arab world. So thank you. In uh, today's world, ladies and gentlemen, we are more connected than ever. Through the web, I should be pressing this button. I'm not sure it's working. Yes, it is. We're there. Now, through the web, email, and social media, as we've heard from previous speakers, people on opposite sides on the globe can talk to each other instantly and more easily than ever before, just in an instant. WhatsApp, Skype, Facebook, Twitter, anything. But is anyone listening? And more importantly, are people understanding? Do we understand what we're talking about? Are we able to filter information in ways that can be useful for our work and for us as human beings? Human capital is fast becoming the key ingredient to the success of all nations. How to effectively develop this critical resource is a concern of higher education, higher education systems actually, all around the world and in each and every nation. Developing countries in particular, with limited means and expertise, face significant challenges as they prepare their citizenry to meet the new demands of a rapidly changing, knowledge-based global economy. For higher education institutions around the developed world, building institutional capacity to cooperate with developing nations and their higher education systems has become a priority as the world faces complex environmental, social, political, and of course, as we know, security challenges. And these, these security challenges have different natures from terrorism to health challenges, like the recent Ebola crisis, which really uh, gave a, a shock to the entire world and to the systems in, on many levels, you know, public systems, social systems, security systems. Now, despite tremendous advances in global telecommunication, some societies have seen little improvement in how well they get along or understand each other. Technology has made our world smaller, but in many cases, our knowledge of each other remains limited. Connectivity has not succeeded in replacing human contact. And I think that it will never replace human contact, no matter how well connected we are, no matter you know, whether we are networkers, which is a great asset in today's world. The physical, I mean, when you meet someone in person, it is very different. It is the only way to understand the values of the individual and also see if you can do business together. The West and the Arab world, for example, two civilizations whose cooperation is essential to world peace, still often view each other with fear, suspicion, hostility, and of course, very, very frequently with ignorance. The atmosphere of mutual distrust between, for example, the people of US and Egypt has only intensified since the uh, revolution in Egypt that started in 2011. Direct and mediated interaction between both parties, all parties actually involved, is still at a low point and we need to do something about it. We need to build bridges of understanding, of cooperation, of progress and collaboration. Mis misconceptions abound, stereotypes are often hardening into caricatures. Now to close these gaps in understanding, new innovative and non-traditional platforms for face-to-face -face communication are needed perhaps more now than at any time in, mo in modern history. And this is because we live in a more complex world than ever before. And today's problems are wicked, are of wicked nature. So there are no straightforward solutions anymore. We need to be able to understand the multilateral dimensions and also the different uh, sides and stakeholders that are involved. We cannot rely on traditional diplomatic systems alone to create these platforms. And diplomacy can no longer be the sole responsibility of governments. 
citizens, businesses, and other private sector entities must play an integral role, an integral part in foreign policy if we want to be, to be effective, if we want to create a difference. The world business community can and should take the lead by creating and supporting programs that help to build bridges between cultures and through interpersonal dialogue. We need more opportunities such as the one that we've been having over the past two days to create more dialogue, more debates, more room and space for understanding. Along with social development and corporate responsibility, bridge building is a good investment for business. Businesses big and small, um, predictability is, their predictability is to prosper and they need to overcome any political or other social or financial tensions that can be destabilizing for them. So this can happen through collaboration only. Companies doing business in the Middle East in particular would be wise to invest in programs that encourage better knowledge and cross-cultural understanding between East and West, among their employees, among their communities and among society. The dialogues in such programs are small compared to the millions of people living in these regions, but small groups of individuals often influence the path of the world. Change happens, should not happen overnight. Change happens as an incremental process, and it should be smaller changes that create the bigger change that creates transformation. When we talk about change, we talk about a different way of acting, but when we talk about transformation, then we refer to a different way of being, and this is what we need to achieve, different way, more positive way of being, acting as individuals and integrating it into our lives. All we need is to understand and prioritize our shared values, engage with the human capital or our employees if we are an organization, and the return on our investment is immense. It is a given. As global thinkers, we have introduced our pioneering Valore program, which helps leaders, managers and decision makers maximize their own capacity and connecting also to their employees by understanding better and improving the culture that exists within the organization, within the company. So with Valore, what we do is we measure the amount of cultural disorder that exists in a company or an organization, we prove with metrics what is wrong, which section, which, which sector is ailing, and then we provide the right workshops and the right methods to overcome those obstacles and to create a culture that unites the employees with the company and creates a shared uh, vision, which means that the output and performance will be maximized, and so profits always get uh, much higher. Now, for each participant who joins our program, they come away also with a more open mind and an open heart, because by bringing their individual values to work, and a ripple, then a ripple effect is created that has a lasting positive impact extending well beyond the term of our Valore program. Now, communication is not a panacea for all our ills. Genuine and honest differences exist, and they will, will continue to exist. And we embrace, we should embrace differences between and within societies. We should not think that we can solve all our problems simply through conversation, simply through discussion. But I am sure that no such solution will come without communication. And we have learned that our increased ability to communicate has not led to an increase in understanding, which is number one factor. Creating more opportunities for real face-to-face -face dialogue and shared experience will go a distance in healing rifts and increasing cooperation, trust, and mutual respect between East and West and the business community can play a critical role in achieving these objectives. One such example is the work that we do as Global Thinkers Forum with the goal of increasing understanding between peoples in the Arab world and the West through personal communication, shared experiences, shared values, exchange of ideas, and collaborative projects. 
So far, in our three years of operations, we have convened more than 1,000 leaders, decision makers, entrepreneurs and academics in physical meetings and more than 10,000 worldwide are part of the wider Global Thinkers Forum network. Global Thinkers Forum touches on all aspects of society, engaging in educational and cultural activities, working jointly on solutions to social challenges faced by our countries, all our countries actually, and along the way changing mis uh, misperceptions and above all what we do is we, we open new pathways for communication in order to promote collaboration. When you have collaboration, then you have more opportunities for prosperity, and that creates more peaceful societies. Collaboration does not offer magic solutions, and is often very tough going. But if done for the right reasons and in the right way, it can open up possibilities and deliver breakthroughs which traditional means of planning and control cannot produce. Collaboration begets collaboration. There is a proverb used in reconciliation efforts in Rwanda. To go fast, walk alone. To go far, walk together. In an interconnected world, it gives us more choice in how we tackle apparently intractable challenges because it tries to tap more of the ideas, the inspirations and concerns that are successful to, that are critical to successful deliveries of outcomes. In so doing, we can build legitimacy and also commitment, because commitment and dedication is very important. And we can generate this way more options for solutions. Whether the initiative begins at the top or on the front line, collaboration makes it possible to weave together different contributions. Power only comes through effective interaction rather than from who operates on which level. And especially now in the era of human networks where power is not top down anymore, but it is bottom up, we do realize the value of engaging our employees, of engaging our stakeholders, of engaging society. The secret of effective leadership is to use one's strengths 